Hello people, it's the 18th of March 2020 and here you are with Dan in Essex UK. So this evening we're going to be having a tour of the Backyard Orchard Food Forest Permaculture Project. So here we go. Now this is a Jubilee Plum, okay? One of the parents of this variety happens to be Victoria. So there we go. Now what we've got here is a lovely blossom on the tree. Now this tree could do with a bit of pruning okay and the time that you prune a plum tree is after the fruit has set okay and that is not the same as when you would prune a pom fruit such as an apple or a pear which you prune during the dormant season. So the time to prune these in the spring when you see them little green fruitlets on there that's when you would indeed prune one of these. If you prune during the dormant season you could risk introducing silver leaf and you really do not want to do that. Absolute powerhouse of a tree this came from mail order trees a few years ago looking very good nice established trunk and you really can feel the power of the this tree so I'm very happy so this is on rootstock St Julian A which should make a fair sized tree eventually when this tree is mature already in this stage it's about to 10 or so or maybe 11 feet tall so very happy about that over here we've got Worcester Pearman a great UK variety of apple not as far advanced as the uh, Jubilee plum but in general apple trees a bit later to leaf out than plum trees are but a little bit of tipping as I call it a bit of furring up ready to leaf out but uh, yet yeah, a great variety to grow hasn't uh, grown quite as quick as the plum tree and that could be to do with the fact maybe this specimen is taking a little bit less time to establish and also maybe the fact that the area this is it doesn't get as much sun but that's how it is and it did produce a small crop last year so hopefully a nice crop this year right so here we have a conference pair no we don't we have a concord concord pair what am i talking about concord pair now the parents of this tree are conference and commerce pair okay i'm 100 percent sure about the conference pair just check out with regards to the commerce pair but I'm pretty sure of that so a lovely tree here lovely specimen looking very very good I've owned this tree for about five to ten years now something like that looking very very good indeed but you can see that uh, starting to leaf out nicely it generally produces good crops some years it sets many small pears um, other years it sets less pears but bigger ones very tasty almost just a really beautiful tasting pear and it's said that uh, if you can only grow one pear concord would be it now with regards to growing pears some people are living in areas where they get late frosts where they get you know lots of breeze that then blows the blossom off now there's a variety called invincible okay which is said to produce two loads of blossom if required so if the wind takes the first slot off or a frost or whatever the tree is then said to put out another load of blossom so this could be interesting for people living in such areas if they want to get a good variety for hopefully a more reliable crop now here this is a stellar cherry right i'll let you have a look at that looking lovely starting to bulk up a little bit there this is going to burst its bud soon and hopefully get some lovely cherry crops. We'll be having to cover it up with some netting to stop the birds getting them. So very interesting with regards to cherries because Stella was the first introduced to the UK from Canada. Okay, the first self-fertile cherry introduced to the UK because before this happened... Cherries, cherries tended to be rather large trees. Indeed, they still can be, of course, but uh, one would need to have more than one tree for cross-pollination. But uh, with regards to this, this can produce crops on its own pollen. Of course, it's uh, good to have another one flowering at the same time, but if you can only have one, you know, Stella could be a very, very good variety for you. And of course, the commercial importance must be said as well, because, uh, you know, grafted trees, smaller trees, easier for picking, safer, more economical working, if you will, and uh, much easier, you know, smaller trees, easier to pick from, isn't it, other than having to go up on ladders and cherry pickers, etc. So yeah, lovely cherry tree, and uh, one can have a cherry tree in their garden, such as this. This is on a minaret rootstock, okay, otherwise known as a vertical cordon. This came, if I'm not mistaken, this came from Ken Muir, okay, and uh, I'm very happy with it. I should have really pruned it more in its younger years, you know, to keep it more of a cordon, but myself being me, I don't have rules when it comes to gardening. I've decided to let it go into almost a tree form on a minaret rootstock and see how it goes. So I'm quite uh, 
interested how that's uh, going to do. Right, going into the poly tunnel here, we'll start with the Dixie Red. Uh, Dixie Red Peach. Here we go. You can see the blossoms on that. I'm hoping for a lovely crop off of this of lovely, beautiful, sweet peaches. Wouldn't that be amazing? Very, very lovely if that does indeed happen. Here I have got a nectarine. This is variety Lord Napier. Hopefully get a crop off of this this year. I know I shouldn't really let it crop um, because it's in its first year in my uh, sort of uh, ownership, if you will. But if it sets some crops, I'm going to let it continue with that. And here we go. We have got peach peregrine saint julian a look at that look absolutely lovely beautiful these peaches like most peaches are self-fertile okay so i don't have to worry about uh, you know pollination or whatever so here we go i've got variety rojo brillante persimmon very unlikely that'll set a crop this year but uh, who knows Another person, one otherwise known as Sharon Fruit Fuyu. And here we have a pomegranate variety province. Okay, now here, this is a tea plant. So hopefully my own tea will be here one day. And autumn royal grape going up the polytunnel and down and around to here. So there we go. So that's just a little bit of the backyard orchard permaculture project. There's, a, there's more I can show you, but uh, many of you have seen that already. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Any comments, questions or whatever, please feel free to post below. Now, I haven't answered too many comments all right, at the moment um, with regards to you know, YouTube because uh, you know, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making videos for people to watch, okay? Because I enjoy making them and a lot of people hopefully enjoy watching them. So I'm concentrating more on making videos at the moment. But um, you know, if there's a pressing question you've got that you want me to answer, Get me on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram, okay? And I'll answer you directly on there, okay? But, um, yeah, so when I get a bit of time off, which we may or may not be getting soon, I am going to be spending time answering your questions, all right? So thank you very much to every single one of you. I truly appreciate you all. And spring is here. See you next time.